Hi, welcome back. Today's video is gonna be so much fun. I got on a Zoom call with Diego, who has been living in Slovakia for over 10 years, but he's originally from Ecuador. We're gonna talk about all things Slovak, but just a heads up, the quality of this video, especially the audio, is not that great. So please turn on the subtitles, either in Slovak or English. Now let's get to the fun part. Hi, Diego. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining me here today. So I wanted to talk to you more about your experience in, in living in Slovakia. Um, so I was really happy that I connected with you over this topic because uh, you're someone who really knows Slovakia because you've been living here for quite a while, as you told me. And uh, you also have experience how it is to be uh, a foreigner living in Slovakia. And I feel like there's a lot of people who are either thinking about moving to Slovakia or who are already living in Slovakia and that are struggling with some common topics and common situations that um, they wish they would know answers to. They wish um, they would have advice or some tips or tricks that um, someone who's already been living here for quite a while could help them with. So um, so that's why we are here today, because you're going to be our guru. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> you're going to maybe help us out a little bit um, to answer some questions that um, might be on their minds. So let's get into it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, I saw, I saw already some of your videos and all that. I really like uh, the topic, the, the idea about uh, discussing a little bit more about Slovakia. And yeah, definitely. Uh, it was I, when I first came here, I had a mentality of I don't want to know anything. I, I never, <laughs> I never, I never did any any real research on the country or the city. I just, I really felt like you know, I don't want to. I don't want to have um, somebody telling me how it is or or to give me a a preconception. I, I didn't want to have a preconception of, of the country when I came. So I came and I'm just like, whatever happens, happens, and we'll see how it goes. And I was super, super happy. Tell me a little bit about your background, uh, how you ended up in Slovakia. Oh, well, uh, pretty much my background you know, is uh, from Ecuador. And um, what, uh, how I ended up coming here, it was actually a long trip, <laughs> very uh, many times. But uh, what I lived in the States after graduating there from university, I was working there. And after a couple of years, I met my wife, Slovak. And, um, yeah, we lived there also in the state for a couple of years. Then we decided to travel a bit. She wanted to see. So you lived in work for for a couple of years, and then you decided to. Um, yeah, 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 I mean, I was I was there from until two thousand seven. Two thousand seven. Oh wow! Yeah. How how long it's been? It's been over a decade, obviously. Over, yeah, yeah, thirteen <laughs> years, fourteen years now. Yeah, it was end of two thousand seven. So it's been like thirteen years. I mean. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a long time. Um, definitely had a lot of great memories, met a lot of people and friends. Um, but uh, you know, just at that time we were thinking about what what was the next move, what to do next. She wanted also to to see a little bit of Ecuador. We went there. Um, I was super super lucky that the company I was working for at the time they were like, hey, you can work from anywhere. No, that was like you know. Uh, Ten years ago or more, it wasn't so popular. They uh, working from home. Yeah, so you were already doing yeah. the remote work thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I started with, and uh, that, that was good. That was that was really good. I mean, especially if you like it, um, uh, having uh, an American job and then working and then living in Ecuador, it was fun. It was great. Um, but yeah, after a few years, then that ended, and and then that was again we were like, what do we do next? What is our next step? And in this case, we decided, okay, let, let's go, let's go back to Slovakia. So that's how we ended up, you know, with uh, oh, wow. uh, Ecuador United States. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, Ecuador United did, did States. Did your Ecuador wife learn, did your wife learn Spanish in Ecuador? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I know you said that uh, the language was, it's pretty easy to learn, but she learned it in a year. And with no teacher, nothing, just like uh, just talking to people. Yeah, that's how it is when yeah. you live in a place for quite a while. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm I'm here for over ten years and I still can't speak Slovak. So yeah, 
<laughs> Slovak is very hard. Yeah. It's very hard. Yeah. Well, and I was just wondering, so we spoke about before about the topic of raising kids in Slovakia and how it is to move with with family with with kids to Slovakia. Whether there is some uh type of advice you would want to give these families that are moving here or that are starting their life here um is this a safe place to raise a family um and stuff like that yeah uh, well that's what i was what i noticed uh, from uh, getting getting to meet a lot of people a lot of parents um foreigners and you know there there are multiple types of situations of families that come to the united to, the united States, to slovakia you know Uh, you have the the ones who are uh, the true word of expat were brought because the company brought them in, right? Or it could be where it's a mix, right? Uh, the one one of the parents is a foreigner, the other one is a Slovak. So, but I, I think overall, overall, what, uh, what everybody thinks is, is uh, you have the same kind of questions that that you do when you are in a big city, right? Mm -hmm. So they they would be asking you about safety, about You know where do all the foreigners are living and i'm just like well you know like we all live here in the city it's not like uh, it's not like in new york city where you have the little italy and the university also communities like this no it's just like everybody lives every, uh, whatever they want would and, you say uh, would you say that uh, a lot of foreigners live in the capital in bratislava or are they spread around the whole slovakia I think the big majority are living here in, in Bratislava. I mean, even even with the, the community, if there's uh, the community, you know, um, when I when I talk to most of the people that I've met, most of them are here in Bratislava. I think just the, because the big companies are here, and that's why the jobs. Um, one one of the things that are very surprising, and not it, it was surprising at the time for me was when I first came. I I thought, man, I I, I guess I'm going to have to learn Slovak because you know. Just, I don't know if, if uh, they're going to understand me or not. And everybody would tell me, don't worry. Everybody here is speaking English. You know, you don't need to learn Slovak. It's okay. And and even back then, 10 years ago or so. But it's like, um, it depends. It, it really is. It's not it's not so general. It's not like everybody. Um, probably if the person is under 40, you're very likely that they're going to know that, that they're going to be able to speak English. Mm -hmm. If they're over 40, it's more likely that they speak. German, German or Russian, you know? Yeah, German or Russian, yeah, yeah. No, that was the you're interesting You're teaching part. Russian in school. Like, my parents still know a bit of Russian because they were taught Russian in school, so. Yeah, exactly. So I, I I found that out, too, that it wasn't just so clear that everybody spoke English, right? And, uh, and usually it's also here in Bratislava, in the city. Yes, you're going to find a lot of people also because of the tourists. That, that would come and all that, that many people would speak English here, but as you go away from Bratislava, you go to other regions of Slovakia, yeah, you better know Slovak. <laughs> <laughs> not, not that simple. Yeah, yeah, of course. And um, so so you're saying it's it's a safe city to, Bratislava is a safe city to raise a family and um, it's um, nothing compared to the bigger cities or what would you say? Yeah, I mean, what, what else my, my suggestion that I always have for, for families that are coming here, um, international families and things like that, it's, it's, it's not more so, don't, don't think about it, like what is the safe area? What what area is super safe to be in, in, in Bratislava? But rather think about um, what is going to be more convenient for you. What is What, what trumps in in your level of convenience or, or importance for you as a family is it is it that you want to be close to the school close to the kindergartens for the kids do you want to be close to say you want to be close to a park you want to be close to a lake um whatever is the, the hobbies that interest you as a family or rather you know maybe you would just want to be close to your place of work so that you don't have to travel so much uh, so i think those are the considerations you should think about more And you would say it's easy to get around Bratislava by foot. You don't really need a car when you have a family or? Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, we, my first three years here in Bratislava, I didn't have a car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it was just absolutely not a problem, you know, like just trains, buses. Um, I always was like super, you know, even my car, it would probably take you from one end of the city to the other, you would get there in 15 minutes. So it's a small city and Yeah, transportation is just super, super easy. Is it cheap or 
more expensive to raise a family in Slovakia? What would you say in terms of expenses? Is it a cheaper expensive uh, country or we can even talk about the city Bratislava, whether you think it can be? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, obviously, obviously it depends. Um, if we're talking about like, uh, let's say just a regular middle class family and all that, it's, it should be absolutely not a problem. Uh, not you can you can find multiple items you need. I'm trying to think right now because obviously if you want to go exclusive, not exclusive, but like high end, or you want to buy the best products, or I don't know if uh, every all the food you want is organic, bio, that that definitely can get expensive, right? But um, uh, I'm just thinking like any of the places that you go to supermarkets, um, um, even the shopping areas and all that, you can always find. Um, Good price, decently priced clothing, food for kids. So I think I, I honestly I did not think that it was just that expensive. Uh, raising a kid, having two here, so yeah. I yeah, do. I think, I think it's okay. I do think that Bratislava is an expensive city. Uh, when it comes to food, mm-hmm. it's it's on the cheaper side. I think food um, yeah. groceries are cheaper, but uh, Bratislava can be an expensive city. Um, yeah, and, definitely. Um, if you're if you're thinking about uh, real estate, like uh, obviously because as as the family grows, you need a bigger space and a bigger place to rent. Yeah, yeah. rent uh, there is no denial. I mean, every year just rent prices, real estate prices increase. And nothing. There is no like crisis or anything like that that will make that has made them go down. Um, for me, it's I find it interesting. I think I think it has to do a lot with um, just mentality of the people of uh, Slovaks. It could be right. Uh, <laughs> just my opinion on this, but uh, what I see them, for example, is they're not very risk. Uh, they're 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 not really open to to risk to to do something risky or big rewards. What I mean, for example, is um, sorry, what rewards. Uh, the risk to reward ratio, right? So if you risk a lot, if you do some risky investment or something like that, that can give you more money. Um, yeah. the, the mentality here is not so much like that for what I see, right? Um, not so much like, let's say, the stock market or, or try to invest in something and you may or may not lose the money or things like that. Or, uh, yeah, or, or Let's let's go. I want to open open so many businesses and let's do something that that could be so successful. More, not so much, right? Um, I, I that's not what I saw. So it, also when it comes to let's say if you have a little bit of money as a family, if you're growing, if you have a little bit, um, they they follow the same or other pattern that which is was kind of like the safest way, the, the most classical way to where you can put your money would be in an apartment in a flat. So that's what people. So the mentality that I've seen here is always to buy a flat. Like you want to have something at least, whatever happens in your life or something, you at least will have a place to that that is your own. Which is which is the cause I would say is why the prices of the real estate don't do not come down because there will always be a person who wants to buy. You yeah. know that's that's kind of what I see. You know if you if you have multiple uh, mutual funds or investment ideas or something like that. Uh, I don't see people talking so much about that here, you know? So I don't think many people are interested or they're like, that sounds too risky. I don't want to do that, right? But so they, they prefer more to hey, buy a flat like this. And So what does Slovakia offer in terms of leisure and activities for families? I would say Tatras, on the high Tatras uh, are a nice place to go skiing. Um, and low touch yeah. are really great for uh, hiking. So mm-hmm. exactly, and I mean, yeah, if, if you if you like that, if you if you like uh, um, some nature to be outside with the family, fantastic, right? Um, summer too, there are a lot of lakes, there are a lot of concerts, there are a lot of activities. There are always there's always something you can find that you can do for for the kids for the family on weekends. Now we're gonna switch to the topic of food. <laughs> What, nice. is your, <laughs> what is your favorite Slovak food? Well, obviously. Okay, so if I think about it this way, like if I, I always said like this, I have I have multiple levels of uh, multiple different kinds of Slovak food that I like. The Slovak cuisine per se, I, I am a super big fan. 
I know, I know, I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but for me, I love it. But let's say, if I was to walk into a traditional Koliva, a traditional Slovak restaurant, yeah, the first thing that I will always order, no matter what they have in the menu, the first thing I will always order would be Prince of Halushki. So, Prince of Halushki? Prince of yeah. Prince of <laughs> so, I, I guess that would be my my most favorite meal. Here, you know? And you know there is there is the version with the cabbage, which is called brings of I mean that is, that is called mm, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, that yeah. also is very good. Yeah. The one thing that caught me by surprise, and that was just me personally, was I was never used to um pasta that is sweet. What is it? Pasta, sweet pasta. Oh, sweet pasta, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That 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 was a that was a shocker. I never thought about it actually. That it's actually, yeah, it's sweet pasta, <laughs> the type of. Yeah, yeah, shulance. Shulance. Yeah, shulance, yeah. yeah. Shulance. <laughs> sweet pasta, yeah. Yeah, and we love that, that was... we We use poppy seeds. Exactly. Seed. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I like it. I like it a lot, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Some countries have it's issues. It's funny that. because I was in Canada, I couldn't even find um, like a poppy seed that was like the only poppy seed they had was more of like a, in a little spice bottle that you would use to just sprinkle it on top of a dish exactly but not like real, that's yeah but not a real um packaging of a poppy seed so yeah you, you would need like 10 bottles of them <laughs> poppy seed is kind of hard to find in other countries for some reason i saw that too yeah, yeah, yeah we saw that. <laughs> um but um no here i like it but i was i was um I remember to my point what I wanted to say was <laughs> I will try I will try everything everything that is Slovak food except for one thing and that is huspenina. Huspenina? There is no way I tried it. There is no way I have. I tried it one time. That you don't it. like it? Oh no! Please no! <laughs> no. That's so funny. My best friend, my best friend loves it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Huspanina, I guess, for if somebody doesn't know about it, it's kind of like a gelatin. It's sort of like um, uh, like a soup. Soup, but it's a very kind of thick gelatin soup, and it has a little like. A, it's like a jello type. Or, yeah, and, and it has things that I don't really think you're supposed to eat those things on the animal. <laughs> As summer, summer comes in, and then just kind of popular. Like, a nice uh, Kovana Kofola, not some bottle. You always have to get the the Kofola from the from the big uh, from those stands where they where they put it in exactly uh, like a tap mix tap Kofola yep. yeah from tap makes such a difference with a very nice klobasa and mustard. <laughs> Yeah, klobasa and sausage, yeah, yeah. yes, and mustard, and and in spring the goat cheese and the sheep's cheese. Yeah, yeah, well, the sheep cheese. Uh, the bread, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What about what about winter, uh, seasonal winter uh, food? Well, you know, when it comes when it comes like to the, in the fall, there is the the hus, the hus festivities and all that. The vino grani that comes a little bit earlier in late all the, August. All the goose, winter. the goose, right? Yeah, um, the geese. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, it's like a game season, so. Uh, you mm -hmm. have all types of game meat that um, that's served. Yeah, and I would say also in winter, kapusnica, which is the cabbage soup, that that's a mm -hmm. very very warming, warm dish for winter time. Yeah, and then you know Christmas has its own traditions. Uh, you know the the fish on, in the bathrooms and all that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. If you do have any recommendations, I don't know if you do, but um, how do you shop in Slovakia on a budget? To shop Slovakia on a budget? I mean, it's it's really not that difficult, I think. Avoid no. Yemen. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> here's how they get you. I can tell you how they got me. Uh, because I, I tend to go to Yemen a little bit more often now than before. But I always have this impression, I don't go to Yemen, you know, like, because Yemen here is, is a <laughs> supermarket chain that they have a lot of uh, bio products and high-end products, so it's always considered the, the most expensive. They also have very nice looking stores from where from far away. Oh, that looks nice. That's probably expensive. But you know how they get you, and I realized this was go there, coffee. The coffee is really good. They give you top quality coffee. You can buy coffee from you know where they sell the, the sweets as well. 
-hmm. and it only costs one euro twenty. Uh -huh. It's the cheapest, really good quality coffee you can have now for a presso, for a, uh, a glass of espresso of uh, black coffee. One euro twenty was the cheapest you can find. So, oh wow! I didn't know that. Yeah, but but that's how they get you there. You know, you go there for the coffee. You know, <laughs> the well, coffee is a trap. <laughs> I'm here now. Hmm, let's try the, the the bread. Oh yeah, and then it gets worse there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the coffee. If I would, you do I want quality, if you do want quality coffee, then Yeme is the way mm -hmm. to go. Absolutely, absolutely. Had some really good coffee. That's that's how they get me all the time. <laughs> that's funny. But uh, okay, so going, going back to what you know, um, something that is very interesting. I, I think sometimes uh, I think a couple of times about this and analyze it is that. Uh, considering with other countries and how you sometimes you, you hear that there's such a big difference between um, that the, the middle class is, is becoming kind of like very small, small because there's a huge difference between upper class and lower class, right? That, that the distance is, is growing so much. Um, I think actually for uh, being into Bratislava and Slovakia, the, the middle class remains quite big. You know, mm -hmm. there's, you obviously have the millionaires here. You obviously have people who are, um, we're very surviving with a little bit, obviously, but uh, not as much as you did in any other country. Uh, I can give you an example. When I went to Switzerland, oh mm -hmm. my goodness, you know, like I, I just went there for work and um, I couldn't even buy a glass of beer because it was 10 euros. I'm yeah. like, are you kidding me? 10 euros, you know? Yeah, Switzerland like, is expensive. <laughs> yes, you know, and, 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 and such a gap. But, um, here, I, I, I think what I, what, I, what I see here a lot is there's a lot, a lot of uh, the majority of people are in the middle class. You know, the majority so, of people are not in the middle class or are are in, in are in the middle class in middle Slovakia, class. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and you, you know, there is a big gap between the upper class and the lower class. Lower class in other countries, in other countries, I've seen that. You know, oh, on other countries, not here, not in Slovakia. Mm -hmm. Not as big as a gap as oh. other countries, I don't think so. You know, for example, take a look at a, uh, maybe back in the States as, or, or even in Ecuador, uh, some people would not even be caught uh, riding the, the bus. They just would never catch the bus. They would always have to take a taxi or they would always drive their own car, right? They're like, oh, no, 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 that's not for me. And, and here is like everybody rides the bus, you know? Like, I know. No Almost you see? everybody, they don't even use cars that much, right? No, and, and it's fine. It's not like uh, nobody's going to look you down because you, you ride the bus. No, it's just a mode of transportation. You see, that that's kind of where I see like uh, there's a lot of like uh, everyone is, is has this feeling of uh, middle class, right? Compared to other countries. Yeah, I mean, if, if you want to really start talking about uh, upper class and all that, there's certain shopping malls, there's certain restaurants, there are certain areas where you're going to see everybody's going to be in super expensive cars and clothes. But as a whole, I, I really think uh, a lot of people here are just uh, in the middle class. And it's nice, you know. So, uh, so how, how, do you, how do you shop on a budget? <laughs> For, oh, yeah, going back. <laughs> Never got to the... I know, right? Um, oh, let me say, there are, there are different. You, uh, after what you learn about all these stores, uh, I mean, really, if you want to shop on a budget, you can go. No, not so many. It's, it, I, compared to other cities I have, I have been to, uh, there are some secondhand stores in Bratislava, not as much as in other places. There is a lot of them, actually. Definitely. I saw them. Yeah, I, I've seen more in other cities. That's kind of what I've seen. But yeah. Um, it's very common, so you can be second hand stores or on the major chains, you know, like uh, Tesco. You could find some some clothing there, or other stores you end up finding like Tesco, things like that. Or sometimes you can just um, buy on a budget depending on the season. So now it's, it's it will start getting warm in the next coming weeks, so you can probably start looking for winter clothes, and it will be much cheaper. You know, what about be, what about groceries? Train groceries. Yeah, from what I understand, from my my knowledge of this part has been that um, there's some sort of a law that, that forbids a little bit this uh, the, the advantage, the, the unfair advantage pricing, meaning that 
a lot of the places you could probably you see this one product the product is probably going to be the same price on 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 any store on a tesco on a bill on a coffin just because they, they want to keep the same pricing and uh so maybe because if you're looking for the same brand and the same product it's probably about the same price if you're looking for um anything a yogurt and you want the cheapest yogurt or, or, or the best price of yogurt you know maybe coughlin maybe a little little could always you could find some places so uh, different stores would have that mm-hmm. but in i'm not i don't know so much i've heard so many many people claim that if you do travel to to the to the other places in, in austria that shopping in austria is, is much cheaper than shopping in austria in yeah i know that's I know. what i heard I, for I clothes it would definitely be pandorf because you get yeah. uh, discounted designer brands and then also um yeah sometimes shopping for for groceries higher quality and lower price in austria yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes the produce in bratislava is not of high mm-hmm. quality when it comes to fruit and vegetables i noticed that I remember sometimes about that. Like I said, I don't shop. I don't shop so much for groceries in Austria. I wouldn't really know how to compare. You know that comparison. And um, oh man, um, I don't know. But like, it, Pandorf, as you mentioned it, Pandorf can be can be an adventure if you don't have a car and you just want to go like without a group or because I don't know, man, man you gotta take the train and then the train will leave you in the middle of nowhere and you're like maybe five kilometers away from <laughs> Flanders and you're you're walking right next to the to the big street, the big road and just yeah. getting there. So funny. <laughs> That's funny. Um, all right, and now we are going to move on to a topic uh, of uh, international cuisines in Slovakia. So have you found yeah. it difficult ex- ex- accessing or how do you pronounce access, access, accessing international um, mm-hmm. in Slovakia? Uh, what is your experience with international cuisines in Slovakia? You know, you know what? I, I think a lot of people, uh, they're, they're very inventive. They're very um, motivated of, of this, of, of offering multiple different types of foods from the world. Um, from the people that I met, uh, from the, all the other foreigners from different countries and all that, uh, many of them are very motivated on bringing their food to, to Bratislava. So, but what happens is, and I, 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 I usually tell this to everyone almost at the beginning, it's like Bratislava is actually very fun. Bratislava can be a lot of like very interesting and, and, and can have a lot of the things you need as a single person or as a, as a family. But one of the main challenges you have is that a lot of the things you, all the marketing, most of the marketing done is in Slovak. It's not like a mix in English. So if you don't know Slovak, you don't know where the concert is going to be like, where this big event is going to be, where the next uh, uh, discount things or or the, or the best restaurant. So that in, in that sense, marketing, when you're looking for things, it's going to be harder as a, as a foreigner to find the interesting things. Um, so okay, if, if you're looking for Vietnamese food, I know a couple of restaurants, but can you even find it on Google right now? Probably mm-hmm. not. I don't know. You know, it's going to be a challenge. Uh, it, it, it's yeah, marketing, marketing for for an English speaker here and trying to find the things you're looking for. I think it's more experience than than actually uh, having a place or a location where you can find everything that you're looking for. You know, um, so food, food. Oh, yeah, Japanese food, Chinese food, Vietnamese, um, even even from uh, my area, South America, Peruvian food, there are restaurants. But uh, okay, so compared to a big, huge city, you don't have like, um, you're not gonna have like a whole neighborhood, you're not gonna have a whole chain of, of a number of restaurants, right? There's one, maybe, <laughs> but yeah. there is one. <laughs> you're just gonna find it. Yeah, interesting. That's, that's the thing. Um, yeah. And I have a few more questions about um, people who are new to Slovakia. How would you recommend to some? Uh, what would you recommend to someone who has problems meeting new people in Slovakia? Yeah. So uh, at least from my experience, like um, my experience was completely different than than a lot of the people that I met. That's that's one of the things I learned over time. Not not everybody's experience is going to be the same. You know, and and. 
now I learned to be more careful about it. Before I would say, oh, it's going to be great. It's going to be, you're not going to have any problem. Everybody is super friendly and open. And you will see it then immediately, like, no, no, no. What are you talking about? It's not like that. Um, it, it, I, I think my biggest piece of, piece of advice about this when, when you're coming to Slovakia uh, is try to understand that a, a lot of Slovaks are, are very mind, uh, uh, they mind their own life, you know, they're just like, they're not going to be coming and looking, oh, you look like a foreigner, hey, how are you, let's go, no, they, they will like to live your life, you know, and uh, they're not super outgoing, they're not going to be super like, uh, hey, come over here, maybe, I know some stories in South America where people are, everybody was welcoming, everybody was saying hi, so like they're not going to say, they're not going to yeah. right, so, so, okay, so basically, the main idea is, Slovaks will not come to you. You have to go to them. So uh, if you're a person who is who considers yourself a little bit more of an introvert, mm -hmm. uh, this is difficult. This is very difficult, as I can totally understand. You have to try to push yourself. Uh, like I was saying, find your hobbies. Find what it is that you, what, what are you motivated? What, what amazes you? You know, what, what drives you? And this topic, try to find the people, try to find the groups where they do this. Where, where they meet. And, and that's where you're going to start meeting more people. Because yeah. otherwise, uh, you're just going to, and I know this too, um, people who don't do this, they, after a few years, they just end up hating the city because they, have no, they don't know anybody. And winter can be brutal here in that everybody's at home. It's depressing and, without knowing people. Yeah, yeah exactly. And uh, that's, I think that's the main thing. Right? To, if you're an outgoing person, an extrovert, you're gonna have less. Friends. You're gonna meet a lot of people, make friends. Obviously, an introvert really try to find your hobbies, and, and you will meet you will meet people that way. Yeah. And my last question is, how could one socialize during pandemic if they're new to Slovakia? Any online activities or group you would recommend? I don't know so far. Yeah, it's. it's I, I think it's super difficult. Hey, it's going to be very difficult even for for the people who have living who are living here for four years. Wow. Um, I don't know. I mean, you can find always a lot of groups like Facebook groups, things like that. Um, but to be honest, I, I I've seen I've seen groups. I've seen people try this, try to do more online gatherings or things like that to get people bring together while they're online. And you know, I just it doesn't. It's not not how a lot of people still do it here in Slovakia. To be honest, no. Um, people are still like, um, at least from my experience, people are more like just personal, person to person. They they like this person to person meeting, right? So uh, meeting real in the real world rather than online world. You know. Oh Thank hi. <laughs> And there you go. So All right. Well, that was my last question. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, it was really fun to talk to you about these topics. And I definitely learned something new from you. For example, about the coffee <laughs> from Yemen. I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's by experience. You, you learn this trick only by experience. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, not my closing arguments, my closing arguments, my closing uh, um, message and everybody is like, like I said, uh, a lot of times just uh, come with an open mind um, and try to be open here coming to Slovakia. It's like one of the biggest um, phrases I always remember is like, it's not good, it's not bad, it's different. Right? Slovakia is not going to be the cup of tea for everybody, but give it a try. Maybe it will be something you will enjoy. So, how did you like the interview? Did you learn something new? Please comment down below with your thoughts. Maybe you have some tips and recommendations for your fellow expats. And also, please let me know if you have any video suggestions. I'm always open to hear new ideas. Ďakujem and see you soon!